Buongiorno a tutti. Hello everybody. Can you hear me? Allora se parlo si dovrebbe sentire. Ma che reazioni? Sentiamo, sentiamo. sentiamo. Ok, you can no, hear me. No. Ok, thank you. We do. So we can start. Maybe someone will come uh, uh, here in presence, but uh, I can see there's a lot of people also connected and some people here in the room. So we can start. And here we have our consular, Chiara Foglietta, consular for the environmental transition and our director of uh, the environmental department, Gaetano Noè. So they will start. To, to talk about the mission, uh, 100 cities. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Are you recording the session already or not yet? Well, one minute, please. Yeah, we are recording. Okay, thanks. So, um, hi, everybody. I'm Chiara Foglietta. I'm deputy mayor on uh, ecological and digital transition. As you know, um, Città di Torino is one of the nine cities in Italy and one of the 100 cities in Europe uh, that uh, has this big goal to achieve uh, carbon neutrality by 2030. So what, is, what does it mean to be uh, a pilot city in Europe? It's a very difficult and big goal because uh, trying to gain carbon neutrality is our future the future for our citizens, building up a, a very comprehensive strategy, starting from uh, the study of uh, our ecosystem with a deep analysis. So we ask uh, where we are, where we have to go, where we want to go, and uh, which are the key stakeholders that we have to engage to achieve uh, uh, this, uh, this big goal. So we are trying to uh, support uh, ex existing initiatives and uh, our positive uh, trends, uh, our positive uh, policy that uh, uh, our cities have to do, have done, uh, we are doing. And so we have to do in uh, our future, but we have to think about the engagement, uh, the strategy engagement of uh, our citizens. So as you can, uh, See, uh, we have to innovate together our future and we have to get uh, involved all to achieve uh, uh, the big goal uh, to become uh, um, a net zero city, so to uh, reduct uh, the CO2 uh, in our atmosphere. Then maybe we have to... Okay. Yeah, our director can talk about our... Uh, the climate city contract right that we are going on uh, uh, with the, the environmental department okay hello everybody i am a, a director of uh, environmental and uh, ecological transition uh, of the city of turin and my department uh, will have uh, um, uh, the task of uh, preparing and uh, outlining uh, uh, the strategic lines uh, of the project uh, um, as explained uh, called uh, 100 uh, smart cities uh, uh, climate neutral by uh, 2030 and also uh, of drafting uh, on an ambitious document denominated the climate city contract and uh, it's a, a great uh, opportunity to test uh, this project, uh, to test and then they establish uh, uh, new social and uh, economic, uh, economic uh, driver based uh, on uh, circular economy, environmental and social sustainability. Internally, uh, the city is uh, setting up uh, a working uh, um, uh, in department, interdepartment working group to align uh, 
the strategy and the initiative um, in all those the domain that uh, affects to uh, reduction the carbon dioxide emissions. And uh, externally, we are starting uh, uh, exchange uh, with uh, um, companies, uh, with uh, corporate and field sector entities, um, acting in our uh, territory. And um, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, also collaborating uh, with uh, university and um, uh, research institutions such as uh, uh, Energy Center of uh, Polytechnic of Turin. And uh, for uh, example, for uh, data gathering and uh, precise carbon dioxide calculation. The climate city contract is a, a document a composed of a, a commitment plan, action plan, a financial plan. A commitment plan is core uh, contract. Um, this document will uh, contain all the calculation and uh, details and summaries and the overall strategy of the city of Turin in the key sector for ecological transition, such as uh, energy, transport, uh, construction, waste. And um, um, uh, we, it, we will uh, uh, open new funding and uh, collaboration opportunities. And uh, claim abroad planned actions and expected results results will feed directly into the climate city contract and uh, finally uh, we hope uh, to finish uh, drafting uh, the document by the end uh, of uh, the year um, thank you for attention uh, thank you gaetano and now uh, we will go ahead um, with the explanation of the project more in general. Uh, there is our lead partner um, represented by Matteo Satta that can explain better the project overview. I, I can uh, share the, the slides, Matteo, and you can talk. Okay, if you want. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much the whole team of uh, Turin and also for the deputy Foglietta and director Noe to find a place in their busy agendas to be with us today. That is, uh, that is much appreciated, but for the whole team in general. Sorry, because... sorry Matteo, yes. can you stop a minute because uh, we can't hear uh, properly. Okay. Uh, I'll try now. Hi. Hello. You hear me? No. I hear myself. But <laughs> um, only a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have the time. Uh, we 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 can. Uh, we can have time, two, two technical minutes. Noi abbiamo il microfono al massimo, Matteo, se puoi aumentare tu in qualche maniera, no. Posso provare. Prova a switchare, Matteo, tra microfono e altoparlante, sul tuo dispositivo. Tra microfono e altoparlante, ah, proprio sul, sul computer? Eh, sì. Okay. Oggi anche tecnica informatica. Non riesco a capire. Riparla un attimo. Sì, mi sentite? No, come prima. Ok, perfetto. Uh, allora, allora. Or try to... Prova a parlare più forte. <ride> Avvicinarsi un po' di più. Posso provare? Allora. 
Io sarei normale. Mi sentite meglio? Mi posso, se mi posso avvicinare al massimo? Uh, mi sentite meglio? Altrimenti provo un'altra cosa. Ottimo. Con le cuffie mi sentite meglio? Pronto? Mi sentite? Sì? Va meglio. Vai. Try, try to, to, to do your presentation. Va, va meglio? Laura? You don't hear me. Un attimo che andava meglio, adesso si sente di nuovo di meno. Prova ad andare avanti, poi continuiamo sì. in diretta. Ok. I, I, I was just saying that I was thanking uh, Torino for the whole organization, in particular the deputy to uh, Foglietta and uh, Director Noé, for supporting us so much and finding the time in, your, in their busy agenda to be, um, to be, um, to be here with us. Uh, now, um, uh, Laura, if you can move the slide on. Or should okay uh, now this project uh, uh, no pr previous one okay uh, and then this project um, now the introduction is that this is part of the 100 climate neutral and smart cities that goes very well with what the introduction was uh, as uh, but the mission for the ones that are maybe not expert of it is it somehow divided in two parts first part you have uh the, the the city contracts what is uh, happening in torino and then that is by the way somehow part of our project and on the, the other side, side uh, you, we have a number of projects that are funded uh under the mission there are around 370 million euros and one of those projects is ours and we are in part of the urban planning and design uh side there are many others on transport mobility but we are on that part and then in this framework we have a lot of cities as you see uh in the slide in front of me but not at all, all of them are part of the of this of um, the net zero city and then of the mission directly however uh all of them can be part of it this is why you can find the discrepancy uh okay the the slide went on again but anyway in the in the previous slide i was explaining uh i wanted just to explain that the lead partner is anci toscana uh in italy it's easy you probably understand easily but for the ones that are uh in uh, in other countries that are connected anci toscana is the association of cities in tuscany and uh, as you see the partnership is extremely heterogeneous uh we start from a very uh strong uh small but strong uh r d group with politecnico di milano leaks foundation that by the way is in in torino too uh the Holberg university jerix herion and ntnu they represent quite a number of competencies from climate change climate neutrality urban planning and also communication because one of them ntnu will work on a very interesting um communication strategy and then we have also the and, and we have also design because university of Holburg is design then we have few few partners three partners that are it experts data and it expert dksr sigi and imt and uh, that is institut min telecom in french and then we have three very we have two uh partners that are very experienced and very uh, specialized in cities. One is very is from Torino, then Torino Urban Lab, that I think the most of you already know. Then we have Energy Cities, which is a French association based in uh, also in Brussels. Then we have Isavod, that is um, an expert in everything is exploitation and so on. Uh, next slide, please. 
And now getting to the second part of the consortium that is uh, somehow what is a bit different by the usual Horizon project is having so many cities. Uh, we have cities divided in three groups that we can somehow uh, squeeze into. Uh, we have the leaders that you see go from, from the stream west in Qashqash to stream east in Sofia, uh, from the north, Differ, Danger, Katowice, if you want, to Athens, passing through Torino, Grenoble, Maribor, uh, Johan, Nina, and uh, uh, I hope that I didn't forget anyone. Uh, and then we have the followers, uh, followers that are supposed to be the cities that will somehow replicate what's happening in the cities that are uh, now leading. Uh, and one of them is Torino. And you will see later on what does this mean uh, in, uh, in, in, in real. Uh, next, please. Now, uh, let's start very easily. Uh, cities, uh, we see cities as a trigger for climate neutrality. I mean, uh, climate neutrality is very, is touching a lot uh, cities. I mean, the most of the emissions come from cities. Huh? Uh, I mean, figures are always complicated to have very complete, but we probably are around 70% for small piece of land because cities are really a small piece of land. And we expect this to increase. Then we need cities, and and this is very important: citizens. I mean, people to support this transition. Otherwise, it will be very complicated. And in Klamaboro, we start from cities. Next, and we apply, and you will understand later also what does this mean. In Concretely, uh, a principle that we call circular technology. What is circular technology is just saying we have all the solutions today. I mean, we have the technology today, but we cannot implement it. We cannot use it. There is a lot of technology out there that can help, but we don't have a quite enough strategic and holistic approach. Then we need uh, to approach cities to the market making cities and the market closer to each other to uh, make sure that uh, we exploit everything we have before talking about innovation. Next, please. And now how we do, uh, I'll explain to you this quickly because you will find this later on in the, in the various challenges. Uh, we divided somehow the cities in two groups. Uh, uh, even if those two groups uh, collaborate together, but to improve the peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, that means exchanges of good practices, making sure that cities talk to each other uh, and make sure that they influence each other, support each other. I mean, I made a mistake in in uh, in Torino. Uh, any other city that will uh, be in the same field can detect it and avoid to do it. Uh, and then the two groups are divided in, in a, from a thematic point of view, very easy. Energy and mobility on one side, Western circularity on the other side. Torino is on the Western circularity one. But any city uh, part of uh, the project that is leader, somehow one day might become also follower. That means I'm very strong on one side, but I may need to learn on the other side. This is stays open. Next. And to conclude, uh, we have like, a, we try just to give you an idea of what is the, the cycle of a city. I mean, the, the cities that are working now as leaders, they will be working, they worked in the last month in def defining their challenges. That's what Laura is going to explain in a few minutes. And now we are moving towards the second step that is the procurement. That is what Francesco Molinari is going to explain a bit later on and let's say that today we are next to the second step that is starting and at the same, same time this second step is somehow uh, the end of the first cycle in the sense that we will keep uh, the process of what we're doing today is also something that is useful to define further define the challenges obviously why we will have then in, in, an innovative procurement as Francesco will explain we will have a tender in September and then we will have solutions. The solution will be deployed. They will be analyzed and there will be a lot of data and digital technology in this uh, a platform, but this is 
bit too early to talk about this but anyway we will be there and then once done that once i know the pilot how effective it is what's the carbon footprint um of, of support let's say how how it improves carbon footprint then we will go on for mentoring for replication what does it mean concretely the leader cities will support the other cities in um in replicating the services that means that in torino we do something about circularity uh, and once done that another city may say okay i like it i want to do it and torino will somehow explain them how they did it and what as an example we should avoid and how to replicate uh, next that i think it's the last one okay yes this is just to thank you and to tell you that we have a lot of social media uh, we have a website then it's uh, if you want to visit it it's easy clamaboro we don't have a lot of clamaboros i mean that's the acronym is quite unique thank you very much thank you matteo and now it's time for the city, so for me, <laughs> for now, to explain the challenge. Uh, it was a, a team building, uh, achieved this uh, challenge and proposed to you today this challenge. And I am happy to say that uh, here uh, in presence, there are the other people who helped uh, me uh, to, to ex define this challenge. So today, uh, we want to explain this innovation partnership that is a type of tender, a type of uh, partnership between public and private, but uh, uh, after uh, our master uh, about this topic uh, will explain everything about this procedure, I want to put only this slide to say it's a long journey for the city and for the private one. So, first of all, uh, we decided to apply with this project uh, in the hub of circular economy and waste. So, so to work about this topic, and uh, we started a dialogue with uh, the waste company of the city, that is Amiat, and I'm happy to see them also in the public. And uh, we discussed about what, what is more important now uh, to do about, uh, first of all, waste collection, because uh, it's a mandatory task for the city, increase the waste uh, collection, a separated waste collection. And after that, how to increase the circular economy. So, first of all, collection, when we have collection and maybe more data, we can understand made better, we hope, the system and we can go ahead towards circular economy. And we decided to work with the textiles and we, in particular, uh, because of our data and because of what is happening here in Torino. And so about textiles, in particular on non-wearable textiles, because we know there's a lot of NGOs all around the city that are working on dresses, reuse of dresses. But uh, what about textiles that are not wearable now? And where, where they go? <laughs> uh, maybe if you are an expert more than me, sure, uh, you know that the travel is very long. So in somehow, uh, somehow stop this long travel all around the world. We don't know how. We are explaining only the problem. <laughs> it's uh, on you. Try to help us with some of your solution. And about we, because uh, we will see some data. Uh, the problem is, first of all, about collection. And first of all, about small we that we know that are in mixed ways today because of a lot of things, also uh, about education of citizens. And this is a slide to explain the long travel of wastes and also um, about uh, all, uh, all materials. So our idea about uh, reduction of CO2 is try to interrupt some of those travels. 
that uh, really in, uh, increase, they are really increasing the CO2 production. So we want to act locally, but maybe in some way act globally. So here's some data, but if you have a question about data, there are my colleagues over the environmental department very ready to, to explain to you. But for now, uh, we can see that for textiles, we are in some way in a good point for collection. But after the collection, we think there is the most of the problems. I can see the colleague from Amiat <laughs> that, is, uh, that agree with me. So, uh, yes, it's always possible to um, increase the collection, but for now, maybe it's better also understand what to do after the collection. And what about we? So, you can see data about Italy. Eight kilograms for inhabitant is the waste collection for we in general. But for the city of Turing is free. So we are not uh, so good in general uh, in Europe, but in Italy, in Torino, we, we have more problems than are other places. So how to increase this? Because also in the region is six, uh, the average of a kilogram for inhabitants. And in Italy is 6.4. So uh, free is a very low rate. So about uh, we, the first things to do, the first task that is also a mandatory task for the city is uh, increase collection. And what the city is looking for, uh, we, we don't know exactly, but uh, we know that there are some phases that we want, uh, some achievement that we want, uh, where we want to go. So, uh, starting with mapping stakeholders, and because we think that not all the stakeholders that are working on those topics are involved now by the city or by AMIAT. And so we have no data from them. And uh, starting from data, it can be the first step in our, uh, in our mind for now. And then uh, mapping stakeholder, engage stakeholder, and build up a data infrastructure that can survive to this project. Because uh, things that happen a lot <laughs> is that you have this European project, you can do this spot things, and after that it, it will finish. No, it's not our intention. We, will, we want a solution that can survive uh, and that can be uh, easily used by the city and continue after this project. And with all those data, with all those engagement and so on, we hope in new ideas, something to, go, to do together, something uh, for going toward the circular economy concept. And then with those new ideas to do participatory actions, promote, but also education, also with schools, but all, with everybody, every citizens, and, and so talk with everybody. So increase the knowledge, raise awareness of the impact of we and textile waste, promote and share existing potential opportunity to recycle, reuse, regenerate at local level, also thanks to data dissemination. Stimulate the collection, recycling, and reuse of those wastes. Also working with AMIAT. AMIAT is the first stakeholder we engaged because uh, we need to understand together. Uh, it's a mandatory task for the, the, both of you, of us, so we have to work together. And favor participatory action, new circular innovative solution in the city. And so trying to go deeply in the solution, uh, we, we need this state of the art, this analysis, this mapping, uh, building up uh, this digital data infrastructure 
implementation of digital integrated services. We don't know exactly what, but something that can help us in, in uh, collection uh, and uh, circular economy, engagement of private and public stakeholders and citizens, and shared knowledge strategies. All for the CO2 reduction, because we are in the mission for, reduc uh, for the reduction of CO2. We are in net zero cities program. And so some expected short term results are increased the overall quantity of we and textile waste collected. That is a mandatory task, as I said, and has enhanced capa uh, capability in sorting mechanism to support recycling and reuse active engagement of a large number of citizens and key stakeholders, study and monitor the waste collection trend. So with this data set, we can... Sorry, uh, maybe someone online uh, is talking? Yes, you, you should mute, I don't know, I cannot. Someone should mute them. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm finishing. <laughs> and so, um, mapping and promotion of ongoing initiatives, because maybe the city don't know what are, are the initiatives all around the city, because has not the, connect, the right connection with all the stakeholders. And maybe a lot of things are uh, happening, but we don't know and we can't uh, Im improve them or work together. And so those are all our uh, um, website connection and email for more information. And now uh, there is a QA session. If you have some question uh, in the public, uh, there is a microphone, and from home you can uh, you can try to talk. I hope not all together. <laughs> so, from the public in presence, have you any question? Okay, there is a, a question from the public. Um, several questions, just try to set up the translation from Italy to English. Uh, the first question is, uh, um, is uh, the challenge focused only about urban waste, the domestic waste, or also industrial? I mean, uh, textile no wearable is about restaurant, hotels, what kind of that stuff. All type of waste. I, uh, <laughs> I, I ask it also to my colleague from the environmental department, but all, uh, also not only urban waste, but also from companies. And there are questions that deal with the normative. It's, uh, we read uh, often recycle and reuse. Actually, we should be uh, said before reuse and then recycle. But uh, it's important to understand uh, um, the question that when some people give away the stuff, that is a waste. Uh, we can't reuse without treat it as a waste. So it's very important to deal with the normative that is tricky. So what kind of possibility there is to experiment different or uh, core, um, experimentation uh, in the system of the legislation that is very uh, tough in this kind of uh, uh, situation. If we collect, we collect what? Waste or just stuff that people if the normative say a waste is something that people don't want anymore, but maybe it's usable, usable again uh, still. 
so if we collect something that is still usable, but we need to recycle, we want to reuse it, not recycle, because how can we deal? Uh, so we can try to push some innovative situation, but if the legislation can permit us to operate, we have we demanded or to the possibility to experiment or not? Are, are you planning to simplify the legislation to uh, enhance okay, and we can't, support? We can't uh, simplify the, le the national legislation, okay? Uh, maybe. We are the city of Torino and <laughs> I'm sure we can't. We can together think about uh, to work with waste or with something that is not waste in a different way but uh, we have to follow the, the the law we can't go again the law against the law no, no, of course of course okay. but maybe there is a, a protected environment where to experiment so uh, can be some kind of uh, uh, support and, and simplification of the uh, collection in order to um, support this uh, initiative of circular economy also by players maybe that are not allowed to uh, collect waste but maybe are allowed to uh, transform goods that are not uh, already waste. Dico in italiano, è un territorio sperimentale, è possibile creare un frame dove sappiamo che la legge dice in un modo e qua c'è un test o no? If I can help, this is a procurement, so it is something that should be compliant with the rules, but what we can do up to me is, I'm a colleague of Laura. City of Torino, Innovation Department. Uh, there is a national program which is called the Sperimentazione Italia, which allows to startups, SMEs, corporate to uh, promote something that it is uh, at the moment not compliant and ask to the regulate into a sandbox. Uh, I think that it is, that, but in this framework, it is not possible because we are asking for something that we can use tomorrow. So it is something that it is innovative because it is not fully available on the market. Otherwise, we wouldn't have asked uh, to do a procurement of innovation. So that this is something that it is not as is already on the shelf that needs to be improved to respond better to the challenge which Laura already uh, mentioned about but it should at the moment comply with the rule. Maybe it can uh, suggest further improvement which needs further experimental activities and the city could help in uh, uh, dialoguing with the, the uh, digital transformation department of the national presidency uh, to um, to ask to 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 adhere to this uh, framework of, of experimentats in Italia, but up to me at the moment it is a procurement and should be in line with the current laws. Yes, I agree. There is a question from home from Desire. You can take the word if you want. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Hi, thank you everyone for being here. I had a question about a final contracting authority, which would be ANSI Toscana. Um, how closely involved would the contracting entity be in the project? Would they also participate in the project operations? Thank you. Uh, Laura, if you want, I can answer. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, no, you don't get totally, I mean, that's something that will be managed, but you will be somehow procurement, but you will be the subcontractor of the, of the project somehow, then, uh, subcontracting, let's say, is, uh, is the best uh, view for, a, for, a, for a, a solution provider, but solution providers will be solution providers, not project partners. I hope that it answers to your question. Great. So probably collaboration would be more interactive with the uh, city of Turin as well as um, um, yes. Yeah, th th this will be presented 
And now the next presentation, I think we'll talk about that. I think that if you can, in a few minutes, I think that you will have quite a number of answers. Great. Looking forward. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Laura, just one thing. We have, there were two questions in the chat. Uh, one, uh, one is more than a question is a, a request is that people that talk in, in, in the room, introduce themselves. <laughs> and the second one is, uh, wants to know if do the initiative naturally need to be from city of Turin or also from the surroundings in Piedmont region. I guess that the answer is quite straightforward, but I let you. Answer. Yeah, uh, it's the city of Torino because uh, we are the city of Torino. And then if you have some solution that can go from the city outside, okay, but the city is in the center of this action, is the most important uh, territory for this action. Uh, and if we can do some exploitation all around, okay, it's a good thing, but uh, we are the center because we are the city and not the region, not the metropolitan city, and so we need that. And to respond also uh, to the question before, I think we can discuss together with the people who will w win the, the tender how to facilitate the experimentation, how to interpret the law, together also with the other authorities, but we can't go against the, the actual law. There are more Laura. questions from the public. You have another question Laura. from... Yes. Uh, maybe while we are waiting, I wanted to bring uh, Are we waiting for another question, Laura? I don't Maybe. know. Uh, okay, uh, I just say uh, I just wanted to say my opinion about this. Uh, Isabella Calvagna, City of Torino. I'm colleague of Laura and uh, the Innovation Department. I just uh, uh, want to bring a personal experience. Um, I lived uh, in Germany for about ten years. That was a big, a long time, and uh, came back last a couple of years ago. Let's say. And I had a big shock because uh, when I came back, I discovered that my plastic bottles had to go into the waste here, unless some experiences, some some, you know, spots where you can bring your bottles, get some money. And uh, when I was there, I remember that by law you couldn't throw any plastic bottle there, and you all know this. I think in Europe it's a little bit different in some countries. So uh, I agree with the, with you when you say that we need a, a legislation behind. So if we don't know if we are wasting or reusing something, so it could be whatever. Now today we are co talking about we and uh, non-usable material, as I called textiles, but it could be whatever we can recycle okay so my opinion is that this is a great not because we, it's coming from our department idea uh, this project but we need to foster the educational part of the thing so it means that a population the citizens needs to understand that plastic bottle it's uh, you know uh, i got money i remember that for me it was more expensive to buy the, the the plastic bottle than the water itself so it was like 150 plus 150 plastic block bottle so i had to bring it back if i wanted my money back so it's really a matter of building a rules 
where the population, the citizens are used. So we can start from school, so it's perfect, this, this circle that Laura, I can see now. First of all, to know we ha which amount of waste we have. So the state of the art, and this is the idea of getting the data and then to engage all in the dissemination, in the education, in schools, etc. And we have we are starting from a procurement now, but it's true that we need some um, law which is um, well, which should educate. You know, you should force a little bit. If we want to really, you know, we want to be one of the hundred smart cities. It has to come from the center, from the government. I don't know if you agree with me. Okay. Thank you, Isabella. Matteo, can you share with us uh, questions that are online? Yes. Because I can't, yeah. I can't read. We, we have two questions. Uh, the first one, one is easy. The second one, I think it's a bit less easy. Uh, the first one is Roberto Cavallo, CEO of Erica. Uh, that ask if we talk about urban waste or also spatial waste. Also spatial waste. Uh, the first question was about this, and we can talk also about the spatial waste. Uh, I think more in textiles than we, but uh, so we are open on it. And the second one comes from Bernadette, Bernadette of Eurecat. Uh, she asks information about the current collection services and facilities, the collection contracts and providers, municip municipal rules, I mean, all information that are related to your challenge will be made available to the interested candidates just to set the scene for potential providers which are not familiar with the specificities, specificities of curating. Yeah, we can we can provide. I think with the tender, uh, I, I have to ask to Francesco Molinari, but he will talk about this uh, later. But I think that in the tender there will be some explanation about the actual collection in the city about textiles and we. So also, if you are not uh, expert in the Torino system, you will uh, you can you are you will be able to participate and know what what we are doing and um, yes so the the answer is yes okay we have a question from the public here in torino hello Camille Vedel from citec um you talked about data which type of data do you really do you have already and which one would you like to have in this kind of data infrastructure Okay, um, I, I will ask also to my colleagues to support me, but we have this type of data. So the collection made by the city through AMIA, that is our waste company. But we think that our, there are more data all around us that we don't know because we didn't engage the, the right stakeholders. So we have in mind, for example, NGOs that are working a lot of te on uh, textiles, but also some of them on we, and we don't know the the numbers. So if you don't know the num the, those numbers, we don't know all the system and how it works and, and so on. So we want data, not of not only the official data that we have that are collected by the city directly through the waste company Amiat, but also the other data that are in the dark for now. Matteo, there are more questions? No, I don't see anything now. No, 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 that's good. Okay, so I can let the floor to Francesco Molinari about the procedure of the tender. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, having me here. My role today is to uh, deep dive into, first of all, the meaning we attribute to today's workshop. And then with uh, great detail, I hope, uh, what we expect to happen from now on with uh, the direct engagement of all the people seated in these uh, physical and virtual rooms today, 
and also other people who may have not uh, made it today, but uh, will have the opportunity of watching the recording of today's session and also get benefit from additional information uh, we will publish on the uh, Clamaboro website where there is a specific section dedicated to the city of Turin. So the first uh, slide is the purpose of this event. This is not an ordinary workshop. This is part of an administrative procedure, a procurement procedure. I will explain later how legal it is. We are not breaking any law despite the unusual approach we are taking to involving public and private entities in a quite unusual way on the co-definition of this challenge, the way we named it and the possible solution or solutions to the challenge. You already uh, listened to Laura Ribotta who presented the challenge. Uh, I have uh, my own comments, which I took for myself, uh, knowing that I would uh, take the floor afterwards. Basically, the purpose of today's discussion is to get to know from you guys if you can suggest directions, sustainable directions, not in the sense of being uh, uh, sustainable in the environmental sense, but more in the practical sense of being affordable and viable and achievable in a relatively short time frame to the big challenge posed by the city of Turin, which was voluntarily kept very broad just to ignite your reflections and uh, procure, if possible already today, some reactions in terms of suggestions. Otherwise, as I will also repeat afterwards, there will be the opportunity of using a template which we uploaded uh, uh, together with the remaining information on uh, this workshop on the website of Clamaboro, the special section dedicated to the city of Turin. You can take that template and send us your comments in the following days. What we are specifically looking for today, especially and in the next days, is information on existing solutions that may be suitable to meeting the challenge that you have been uh, hearing about earlier today. These can either be existing products and services. For example, when Laura repeatedly mentioned the uh, data infrastructure, the data platform, uh, there's plenty of data platforms uh, in the state of the art. If I were a, a, a seller of, a, of data platforms, I would immediately start making questions which I want to make. So Laura, Laura take note uh, and your colleagues as well, because uh, as someone already said from the audience, we would like to know more about the existing data, the new data, uh, the current uh, uh, storage and processing systems that are in place, the ERP systems of the city of Turin, of AMIA, the interoperability requirements, and so on and so forth. So solutions may already exist in the state of the art, but even in a more subtle way, we are interested in knowing about uh, uh, prototypes which are harder to identify because there is no marketplace for prototypes. And also a side reasoning is often required to move from a prototype that was developed out of a research project, for example, and maybe in another domain to transfer it to the domain we are embedded in today. As far as the prototypes uh, uh, are concerned, uh, recommended uh, TRL uh, technology readiness level, the, the, the maturity indicator for uh, these prototypes uh, is in the range of five to six. So we would be looking for uh, 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 something that has already uh, gone through the laboratory uh, testing phase and maybe started already to be tested in real or realistic environments. The reason for this will be clear uh, in uh, very few minutes when I will uh, describe the features of the 
uh, expected solutions, uh, one of the features is obviously related to the uh, relatively short time frame for deployment, and therefore we are here uh, um, in a situation where we cannot waste too much of your time and our time to wait for the prototypes to, to become viable products and services. There will be this call. The call will be launched by us, by Anci Toscana. It will be published uh, uh, at the end of September. We have an interim, uh, an internal consortium meeting in uh, Kashkaish on the 20th, 21st of September. So reasonably speaking, we will take the final decision there. So in the following days, we will publish the call. And the call will have a budget of approximately 300,000 euros, a bit less. And it will aim to reward two distinct and independent solution providers. This is very important to bear in mind because uh, we are really not aiming at a predefined solution. And with the same train of logic, we are not aiming at one single solution, but we are open to receiving and rewarding different approaches, different prototypes, different pathways to solving at least one part of the big problem that was described earlier. This is another question for, for you, Laura, and for, for your colleagues. Uh, uh, what is really priority for you? Uh, you mentioned uh, electric waste, uh, you mentioned textile waste, you mentioned uh, more globally special waste. Is there anything that is really priority? Are there any differences between the ways of collecting, differentiating, sorting, uh, uh, storing, and so on, that can constitute separate issues, which we will make distinct in the description of the challenge when it is put into the, uh, the, the official documents of the call for tender, and therefore maybe what we might expect is two different solutions because one is dealing more with a, a specific kind of waste and another with another different kind of waste which are sharing some process related aspects but also having different uh, life cycles or uh, i don't know what i'm not an expert of this domain uh, participants in the call can be individuals or even consortia we will not put uh, particularly tight uh, constraints uh, on the past experience, the references, uh, turnover, and any other kind of uh, evidence that these people or these organizations uh, should bring with them before accessing the call for tender, because we are more interested in smart solutions which will be evaluated per se, rather than uh, being reassured uh, of the background of the participants in this call. And I will be back, uh, that will be my one of my very last slides uh, on the mechanism that uh, lies behind the uh, call for tender, the call instrument, which uh, was uh, chosen for this purpose. And, and it was mentioned in the first uh, um, slide from Laura, the innovation partnership instrument. Another noteworthy aspect is that this call uh, does not only involve the city of Turin, but with identical mechanisms, seven other European cities. I will provide you with the list of cities in my last two slides with the respective challenges. But while we are speaking, activities are ongoing for the preparation or for the follow-up of events exactly identical to these identical in structure, identical in uh, the present presentation uh, of the challenge and the request to participants to provide ideas uh, and suggestions for, for uh, the, the shaping of the call for tender uh, in other seven cities. Seven cities, uh, two of them at least, have very similar challenges to the city of Turin. These are uh, Kashkaj in Portugal and Maribor in Slovenia. And by chance, none uh, of them has already uh, done their own 
preliminary market consultation. So for those who may be interested in participating in the tender concerning Turin, my suggestion is to take a look also at the agenda, of, at the calendar of the coming uh, consultations in Qashqai and um, Maribor, because the challenges as they will be presented will share many traits with this one we are hearing about today. Can we go to the next, please? Okay, so uh, I was saying that we are very open and we are to some extent neutral or, or agnostic for the uh, kind of solutions that already today can be suggested to us. But we have at least the perception that five dimensions of these solutions should be there uh, in any case. The first dimension is the connection with the challenge, of course. Uh, you can probably pick up a subcomponent of the big challenge and propose uh, tackling with uh, a specific issue connected with the big dream we are all having today, but still there, there must be a connection, otherwise the proposal would be discarded. The second aspect uh, was alluded to by Laura in her presentation, but let me put more emphasis. And also there was a, um, a comment from another colleague of the city of Turin, sorry to, to have forgotten the name, but the lady uh, with 10 years uh, uh, spent in Germany, she said, uh, um, it's a lot about people's engagement. So let's not forget or let's not discard the possibility that uh, some of the solutions proposed uh, by the participants in this call for tender may be socio-technical the way we like calling them. So they should put together aspects uh, related to technology with aspects related to people's behaviors or incentives or behavioral change. Maybe two solutions could be one purely technological and the other one uh, socio-technical. Who knows? It depends on what we are going to get from you. The third uh, dimension to be considered is the budget. Uh, 300,000 euros divided by two, that makes 150,000. Uh, VAT exempt or uh, included, uh, excluded, but in any case, it's not a huge amount of money. So let's go for low cost solutions, trying to identify uh, areas uh, of the uh, big uh, perimeter uh, of this uh, challenge where uh, the low cost solutions can be more effective. Fourth component or element is scalability we can predict that anything that works in the small will be not only awarded and deployed in the context of this call for tender, but also considered by the city of Turin for further extension in other areas of the city, in other typologies of waste. That's another question for Laura and the team. Does it make any sense that we restrict the experimentation, for example, to a specific district, uh, neighborhood of the city, or even a street? That is going to be something that uh, uh, people might ask very, uh, um, almost immediately, uh, when exposed to the description uh, of the challenge in the context of a real call for tender. So let's get prepared to figuring out if that can be a way to downsize the complexity and also the, uh, the, the hardness of the problem to a more manageable dimension. The other element we are looking forward to seeing is the transferability. I already mentioned there are two other cities with very similar uh, challenges. I bet with you that uh, a solution, the same solution, uh, might be presented uh, as a good for all solution um, in, in the three cities, not only in the lot of this call for tender, which is reserved to the city of Turin. Next, 
So the milestones. Today, today we have started the discussion on the city challenge, and I hope, because we, there is plenty of time, that there will be also a discussion with uh, some of you presenting possible solutions. The level of abstraction has been uh, voluntarily kept very high, so don't hesitate to mention experiences or results of projects or even products and services you are aware of. If you don't want to, to do it today openly, you can use the uh, template uh, available for you on the uh, project website, website, but bear in mind that uh, uh, we have some obligations of transparency, and therefore today's uh, proceedings will be uh, are being recorded and will be published on the website. And same goes for all the received contributions. We will uh, publish them um, entirely, unless you suggest or recommend that some parts of your contribution should be removed, but only for the sake of protecting uh, intellectual property rights. Uh, we have a deadline, which is the end of July. Until then, we will be happy to receive written comments and contributions. Uh, it's a hard deadline, not only because of the upcoming holiday period, but also because in order to publish uh, the call for tender by the end of September, we will definitely need to work uh, in August, as well as in uh, September itself. So, uh, last minute contributions uh, would be at risk of not receiving adequate consideration, not because of uh, bad will, but only because of uh, lack of time. I already said uh, uh, the call should be published until the end of September. This is for us another hard deadline, we examined the possibility of uh, a, a later uh, publication, but uh, the, the, the internal uh, timelines and deadlines and milestones of our project are so tight that we have to go like that. And also for the sake of allowing sufficient time to the proposers, to the bidders, to prepare uh, a decent offer, uh, although uh, the specific instrument we chose, this will be a pleasant surprise for you, I will mention it in a couple of slides, allows uh, um, more uh, comfortable times for uh, reflecting on the proposal than the deadline that we are tentatively uh, putting between the end of December and the beginning of January next year. Uh, we are definitely committed to signing the contracts with the 16 winners, two per city times eight cities, uh, until June. Uh, this is something we consider a hard deadline for ourselves. So you might uh, ask me why so much time between the deadline of the call and the uh, uh, maximum date for signing the contracts, uh, I will uh, explain the reason uh, in a couple of slides. Next, please. Can I see the next? Thank you. I was mentioning that it's all legal. In fact, it is. For those who are curious, the innovation partnership is mentioned as an instrument in uh, Article 31 of the European uh, Directive on uh, Procurement, which uh, has been adopted by all member states, Italy included. Uh, anyway, we will make reference to the European legislation because this is a European call uh, acting in eight uh, uh, countries at the same time. The legal basis for Anci Toscana being uh, the uh, federated procurer on behalf of the eight cities comes from Article 38 of the Procurement Directive, as well as from the uh, grant agreement signed with the European Commission, considering that all the money uh, to finance uh, the, the call for tender comes from the European Union within the framework of the Climaboro project. The preliminary market consultation, today's event, 
rests under the provisions of Article 40 of the Procurement Directive. And for any other question, feel free to contact our FAQ site and to send any other question to us. We will be happy to reply to you and at the same time, anonymously publishing the question and the answer on the FAQ site. The information concerning today's event, all the other seven events and the future call for tender will be published on TED, has been published and will be published on TED, which is the supplement uh, of the official gazette of the European Union dedicated to public procurement. Next. So let me go back to today's discussion. The city of Turin, together with the other seven cities, have their own priorities of uh, climate policy. We uh, listened uh, to the introductory uh, speeches of the councillor uh, and the director of the city of Turin uh, dealing with uh, uh, some of these priorities and uh, especially those related to the topic of the challenge, which has been defined across time and across a number of internal meetings of the Climate Borough Consortium and today for the first time is being uh, uh, shared with the uh, market and research players, not only from the city of Turin, but also from other European locations. Uh, as you know, there are more than 30 people at the moment connected through the uh, city's video conferencing system. The idea is to make progress. So after finalizing my presentation, I, I would like to push for more interventions from the audience, specifying what they think uh, should be uh, a matter of reflection uh, for uh, the city of Turin and for ourselves in terms of features, constraints, opportunities, uh, limitations, and so on and so forth. Next. From my point of view, the focal points should be these three. First of all, data. To the extent that uh, an innovative data infrastructure could possibly be one of the desired outputs in uh, the perspective of the city of Turin, we should ask uh, ourselves a number of questions like those listed uh, here for uh, exemplification purposes including a question on interoperability. I already mentioned the, the topic, but I put it uh, down at the level of technology. Then people is also uh, a possible uh, issue to explore for further, uh, including uh, the role of citizens, other stakeholders. There is a long uh, list of stakeholders. Also, some of them or most of them mentioned in the description of the challenge you could already get access to, um, which was uh, presented together with the announcement of today's consultation. So it's uh, also a lot about that, and for sure the call for tender will contain more information on this topic. And finally, technology. Technology has a lot of uh, question marks because, for example, uh, the description that Laura Ribotta did of uh, the data platform made me think of uh, the concept of climate services, uh, which, uh, despite the, the, the term, uh, are mostly collections, uh, uh, smart collections of data uh, used by decision makers, especially public decision makers, uh, to improve the quality and timeliness of their decisions uh, in the area of uh, uh, climate and environment especially. And then we have citizen science, which probably pertains uh, to the possible role uh, of technology itself and maybe some other kinds of incentive to procure citizen behaviors which uh, are not that uh, common at the moment. But as Laura again said in uh, her introduction, it's a lot about uh, igniting processes which also uh, include because they start from the behaviors of uh, households or even 
businesses uh, involved in uh, the uh, waste uh, uh, differentiation or segregation value chain. And then we have obviously gamification. I don't need to spend much time on that. And back to the legal and ethics uh, aspects, you've uh, heard already the reply from Elena De Ambrogio. I take the opportunity to say hello to her um, concerning this suspension, suspension or possible suspension of some of the uh, constraints coming from existing legislation and regulations. This is what is normally known as a sandbox environment, uh, which uh, not very curiously, because the city of Turin participated actively in the write-up of the climate borough proposal, but we discussed a lot about this concept of sandbox, the name, the term sandbox is mentioned quite a lot of times in the grant agreement signed with the European Commission, and the process that Elena mentioned is exactly the process we would like to ignite, also based on the experience of past projects. I don't want to make any name, but also involving very important cities, being very successful in their experiment experimentations of innovative solutions uh, to fight global warming and climate change. And then when it came to adopting those solutions for real, the answer was, eh, but we cannot, because that is not our legal competency. Uh, what we miss is uh, regional legislation or national legislation. Uh, other people should be contacted to let us work in the direction we have uh, spotted as promising thanks to the results of this project. We don't want to repeat uh, the mistake suppose it is a mistake of other previous projects, we would like to um, adopt uh, a, an integrated vision and approach, which also includes what to do next. So don't be surprised is if in the text of the call for tender, you will see mentioned on top of normal privacy related uh, aspects, uh, personal data protection and so on. Uh, also aspects related to legislative and regulatory innovation, which can be suggested by the uh, operation and the results of the pilots uh, we uh, expect to ignite in these eight cities of Europe. Next. So why did we choose the innovation partnership? Uh, uh, did we choose the innovation partnership? And this is very intriguing because I want to, to mention, uh, to avoid misunderstandings, that this is the very first time ever that an instrument like this is being deployed in eight cities simultaneously with these budgets and uh, with these uh, uh, ideas of jointly contributing to the fight against uh, global warming and climate change. So there is a lot to learn also uh, for those who will be engaged uh, in the design and the implementation and the coordination of this action. So let's imagine, let's uh, read uh, the, the slide in front of you from left to right. Uh, let's uh, imagine that uh, uh, there will be n distinct bidders to this call. Normally, what happens is that uh, every bidder prepares a technical offer with the description of the solution that is proposed to meet uh, the requirements of the call. And together with the solution, what normally happens is that a price is made, a discount of the base, the base price. No, if the base price uh, was 150,000, 10% discount uh, could be uh, accompanying the technical bid. This is not what is going to happen. What is going to happen is that we will ask you until you remember the end of the year or January next year, we will ask you to submit 
only a technical bid without any price. And in the technical bid, we will ask you to propose a solution that according to your understanding of the call has the best possibility of being rewarded. A solution without a price. Then what is going to happen? The city of Turin will undertake bilateral negotiations with each of the bidders. Each and every bidder will have the opportunity of listening to the opinion of the city of Turin on the received technical bid. And this is again perfectly legal. The city representatives will tell you, guys, this is good, but for example, these aspects might uh, deserve some extra reflection or th those aspects are factually wrong. The solution should go across this alternative pathway or maybe uh, even things like this thing, I don't need it. So you can drop it. It's out of the scope. And so by dropping it, you may save some money that you can be free of dedicating to improving other aspects of the solution you proposed. After giving to each and every bidder the opportunity of this negotiation, there will be the real call for the final or revised offers, which in this case will also include the price. After that, the usual evaluation procedure will take place awarding not just one, but like I said, two distinct proposals according to the best quality versus price ratio or as uh, legal experts like saying, according to the meat principle, which is not about uh, hamburgers, but stays for the most economically advantageous tender. Next. As I promised, I will go quickly through the eight challenges. This week, we already had a preliminary market consultation in Sofia and another one in Grenoble. In Sofia, the challenge was about how to reduce the occupancy rate of parking space in the center of the city, which are uh, normally occupied by nearly 100%. Uh, this creates an enormous congestion of traffic because uh, car drivers spend minutes and minutes, uh, uh, if not hours, every day trying to look for a parking space and never find it uh, because of that. So uh, that was the challenge and the discussion was very interesting and I am proud of saying that already a number of solutions were sent to the City Hall, which will be soon published on the specific page of the City of Sofia. Grenoble, Grenoble presented a challenge re, uh, related to soil. Maybe the soil word is the one that is missing here. And the, the challenge resembles uh, the challenge of Turing to the extent that it looks at, at a data platform uh, starting from the understanding that uh, the concept of soil and especially urban soil, although Grenoble and especially Grenoble Metropole, which is the metropolitan area of the city of Grenoble, has a lot of uh, soils which are not uh, technically uh, uh, occupied by buildings or uh, uh, concrete. Nevertheless, they have uh, designed a smart challenge putting together soil as a common indicator of improvement in the direction of climate neutrality and uh, a collection of initiatives, uh, all of them pointing at uh, different ways of uh, improving the quality of soil. And then we have two more challenges, uh, one in Athens next Monday, and another one in uh, Differdange in Luxembourg, again uh, next week. 
They will uh, speak about uh, solutions to improve the engagement of people and also using data visualization to that extent. My last slide is the next one. And apart from Turin, please, can you go to the next slide? Apart from Turin, I already mentioned Cascais and Maribor with quite similar challenges to yours. And so I'm only left with uh, describing uh, the challenge of the city of Ioannina uh, in Greece uh, related to a very nice lake they have within the, the borders of the city, which is at uh, risk of uh, increased pollution because of the behaviors of both the tourists and the residents in the lake area. And so the idea, again, is to create uh, systems of information using uh, various kinds and types of data to improve uh, people's awareness uh, of the importance of the problem and therefore their attitudes to uh, improve their behaviors. I think this is my last slide. Uh, can you go to the next? Exactly. So I thank you very much for your patience in listening to me and I will still be here for further questions on the procedure. Although, like I said, I would welcome additional uh, uh, interventions from the audience uh, uh, to describe ideas and proposals which we might take uh, as inspiring suggestions during the long journey which will uh, lead us to the publication of this call in uh, less than three months time. Thank you again and have a good afternoon. Okay, uh, thank you, Francesco. Before going to the questions from the audience, we would like, first of all, to apologize with the audience in presence because we have some technical issues due to the volume configuration, but don't worry because we are sending the recording and all the material that you saw. So the presentation are going to be shared with all of you. So no issue. Um, and then since we had some issues, with the volume, we would like to share again with you the most important deadlines, which are by the, the end of July, you have the possibility to send uh, the contribution, a contribution to the, to the city hall uh, and to explain to us your proposed solutions. So you find these documents on the website, climateboro.eu, on the section public procurement, open calls. Okay, so there you find the documents that you can download and fill in and send to the address that you will find written on the document. Okay, so this is the very first important thing. And then by the end of September, we will open, Angie Toscana will open the call for tender that you can participate in and hoping to get the money at the end. Okay, <laughs> so. If you have some questions now, uh, it's time to start. Then, Francesco, if you can please help us to read the questions on the chat, because we don't know how to access it from here. But first, I would uh, leave the floor to the audience in presence. And it was Davide Micheli, a colleague of Laura Ribot. <laughs> Uh, so I introduce also myself <laughs> before speaking. Uh, my name is Elena Ferrero and uh, I am the CEO of a startup in the textile waste uh, management. Um, I would like to ask uh, what are the advantages or are there advantages in sending in advance uh, our ideas uh, or proposal uh, at the end of July? because maybe it can be yeah. a bit uh, risky. The to... advantage I can uh, answer, and after uh, maybe Francesco can add something, uh, is that the tender will be uh, constructed and written also on your proposal. We can change what we are thinking now because of your proposal. So we can direct the, the tender better because for now, we don't know the technologies that are there <laughs> or the good practices that are there and so on. If you uh, send us this document, we can direct better our tender. 
and you have to know that your document will be published. This for this is a bit maybe risky to disclose uh, on the website to anybody. You have to decide what type of information you want to share with us and with all people. Uh, enough information to direct our tender and not so many information to, to have problem with your um, added value. But maybe Francesco, you can add something about this? No, no, the answer is correct. Let me add again, it is perfectly legal. It is in the interest of the administration, in the interest of the procurer, because in so doing, we increase the chances that the solutions we are looking for, we will actually materialize. Because the challenge could be so abstract, the challenge could be so vague uh, that uh, the, the call for tender would be at risk of not being um, participated in the way we would like. And therefore, with the lack of participants, uh, the risks of not having satisfactory solutions would be higher. So the interest of the administration is fulfilled. The interest of the participant, I understand the embarrassment from uh, your side, but uh, uh, you should consider that, uh, for example, the risk might be higher uh, if you don't uh, submit any suggestion that uh, the final direction of the call for tender will be so distant from the solution you are in possession of that uh, the chances for you to participate and be successful will be uh, dramatically reduced in case you don't make any suggestion. Likewise, uh, the constraints that we put in terms of uh, um, budget, uh, in terms of uh, maturity, in terms of uh, scalability, you remember the slide, uh, could also be so strict, so tight, that you could also say uh, in, the, in the text you sent to us, this is impossible to achieve. There is no way, it's uh, too ambitious. That would still be precious information for us because it would force us to revise the challenge, not necessarily in the direction suggested by you in the case you chose uh, not to say anything else than this is an impossible dream. Uh, we are aware this is a dream, uh, but it's uh, still uh, uncertain whether it would be possible to achieve it at least in part. Okay. And I have also another question, if I can. Um, the two solutions that are selected um, should have uh, one manager textile, the other we, or uh, both uh, at the same uh, solution? We will see. Uh, in respect of who will uh, come to us, who will propose to us something, maybe uh, it's also something that we discussed. Maybe it's the the more easy solution to have someone on textiles and someone on uh, we. Uh, but for example, if everybody are proposing something for both type of waste, uh, we can uh, have uh, both kind of waste for each. But uh, we think that is some, in some way they are so specific, those type of ways. So maybe the easy answer is that we will select one for textile and one for we. But it depends on who will propose to us the solution. And also to, to, to answer to the previous question, uh, something that you can say, uh, as Francesco mentioned before, is for that budget, all around the city, it's impossible to do that solution. You have to choose a district, for example. If you say something like this, we have this information. We can discuss internally, politically, administrative, in an administrative way, technical way, a lot with my colleague of Amiat and so on, and decide the district before the tender, and maybe put it in the tender. 
This is one type of information that is not, again, your, uh, your private uh, added value, but uh, is to help us to do in a right way the tender. There is a question online, I can't read it. Uh, Francesco, if you can read and, and if you have the answer also. And, uh, I, can, I can ask the question also because I think that Francesco has to answer, then we will do this in a more uh, uh, scenographic way. <laughs> uh, then first, what will be the, um, that's Bernadette from Eurecat, uh, what will be the foreseen duration of the contract starting in June 2024? Um... Approximately one year. This means uh, more or less one month more, one month, month less. Uh, if we had to take a decision today, we would make it shorter. Uh, so nine months. But it depends a lot on uh, what will come up from the uh, eight preliminary market consultations. It makes sense to keep it short because uh, we want ready-made solutions. And uh, as Matteo Satta, the coordinator of this project, said in his introduction, we are aiming at uh, a, a, an outcome where uh, the exemplary, uh, the, the, the examples of the city, for example, the, the examples of Turin, the experimentations done successfully in Turin and maybe Qashqais and Maribor can be extended to other cities within the time frame of the Klamaboro project. The, the Klamaboro project will have a second round uh, of another call of tender similar to this one, which will serve to attract more cities and probably facilitate the transfer of the solutions tested in Turin and somewhere else to other cities of Europe. You remember from Matteo's presentation, there are 14 cities in the consortium, only eight of them are actually engaged in this round. There will be a second round and there will be more to learn for the time being. So it makes sense to keep it short. It is still uncertain how short the duration of the pilot might be. Second question. Are we from Bernadette of Eurecat? Uh, you will publish our document as such with our name, not part of a report as done by other OMCs. I mean, it means to understand if we put on the website, the, the, the solution form will be put uh, as it is with the names. I mean, I mean yes. you have done this. Yes. The, the full template will be uh, published as it is. The only exception, for example, you might want to touch another document, which is, uh, which pertains to a special uh, item covered by confidentiality, business confidentiality concerns, you may ask us not to publish that annex. Or you can also identify, if you download the template, you will see, you can identify some subsections of the template you don't want to be published. So apart from the case that you delete or ask us to delete all the sections, which would make little sense uh, out of the, I don't remember, six sections of the document, you may decide to ask us to drop one or two of them. And we will be happy to do this because uh, of a, a credible reason, uh, which is not the reason uh, uh, of the embarrassment uh, of uh, the colleague uh, who made uh, previously a question from the floor, what is the, the reason why I should uh, make uh, uh, myself visible as a possible solution provider. That is not a good reason for not publishing the information. A good reason is we have a patent or we have an ongoing process of patenting uh, 
a result, an innovation result, which we don't want to disclose. In that case, uh, we will be happy to drop that information uh, from the, the template. So, uh, Matteo, can you see other questions online? Yeah, we have other two questions. Uh, one from Desiree Topfer. Was the question of project duration already clarified? I'm not, uh, Desiree, if you're here, if you can explain us better what uh, you mean. Yes, thank you very much. It was actually just clarified two questions before. I wasn't sure whether I was missing something. So, everything fine, thank you. Ah, everything fine. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh. I had another question too, whether license costs and maintenance would be included in the project BJ. Uh, that opens another interesting window. I will try to keep it short. Uh, for sure, the contract with the city of Turin actually signed by Anci Toscana because the procurer will be Anci Toscana, but in any case, all the activities will be uh, realized uh, in the city of Turin, in the territory, in the uh, areas identified by the city of Turin and specified in the call for tender. But uh, apart from paying against uh, the full and complete deployment of the solution, in this case, within the borders of the city of Turin. Is there anything else we would like to gain from this uh, uh, call for tender? In other words, there is another typology of, uh, 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 in, of innovation procurement instrument where the procurer also uh, demands to be considered in the future exploitation of the results. Suppose that we do have a prototype and the prototype is awarded and the prototype is deployed for real uh, within the borders of the city and the pilot. And therefore the final solution, which is uh, uh, available at the end of the pilot phase, say after one year, has been for sure paid for, but also gained from the advantage of being supported and facilitated by the city of Turin in many respects, including accessibility to the pilot site, uh, loosening the constraints of regulations and so on. So in some way, the city of Turin might want to receive more than recognize a right to a license. So this is something we haven't yet started to discuss about. Therefore, I cannot commit, for example, uh, on behalf of the city of Turin, but for sure there will be among the documents composing the information package of this call, a detailed description of the way we plan to regulate the uh, IPRs coming from the experimentation. And let me reassure you that my personal view is that uh, we will uh, uh, have to make sure that uh, the winners of this call are put in the best possible condition to reuse and deploy again their products and services in other urban contests in the simplest possible way, because this is our vision, this is our intention to make sure that a next generation of climate-oriented products and services are successfully tested in a relevant number of European cities and made ready for further deployment in other cities creating the conditions for startup enterprises or even established companies producing and installing those products and services to prosper and become bigger and possibly become unicorns at European level 
cutting across the legal and administrative borders that all too often block the growth and prosperity of European startup enterprises. That's a political vision, an ideological vision. It is my vision, but I will confront that vision with that of uh, the other colleagues and partners in this consortium before uh, publishing the call. So let's uh, stay tuned to hear more on this topic. Are there other, other questions? Um, maybe one direct um, yeah. query back. Many thanks for the clarification. Um, if the project winners deploy some software, um, will the license cost for this software also be um, paid for by the contracting authority? Also, are these included in like the overall budget or will um, the service provider pay the license cost for let's say just like a database that is deployed um, for the monitoring tool you will make a single price it will be all included okay great many thanks um maybe one last question for my side if i may um so um you're describing that um, there will be two distinct solutions awarded and it's possible that each solution only covers one part of all the criteria you want to see covered um, with the project call. And if both solutions kind of cover 100%, um, depending on which solutions you get, um, you will select these solutions. So assuming that one solution or one question, one solution doesn't need to fully cover all of the points that you require, correct? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. That's, that's and the final possible. yeah, and the final distribution of financial means will also be in relation to what areas a solution covers and what areas does a solution not cover, right? It's uh, like uh, purchasing a computer. If you want to buy a computer, you go to the shop, they make you a price and you pay and you get a computer. It's the same mechanism. You will be the, the seller of that computer and we will be the buyers. So you will tell us how much this costs, knowing that we don't have more than 150,000 euros all included to pay for your solution. Then if it includes 1%, 50% or 100% of the requirements, uh, it will only influence the evaluation once the price has been given. You see what I mean? Yes. Um, what happens if two solutions propose, for example, a data tool and another solution proposes rather a communication focused approach um, or there is no proposal for a communication focused approach for example how will you try to deploy two solutions um, because you said you're looking for different approaches in the end and two will be awarded uh, which one will be deployed You're muted, Francesco. Oh, sorry. Both of them in parallel. The two winners will be deployed their solution in, in parallel to each other. Okay. And then you compare how how well these work out in the end. Without any intention uh, uh, to to influence our opinion on your uh, solution. So the, the comparison will take place, but it will only be for our internal purposes. Once we sign the contract with each individual solution provider, the obligation will be to deploy and in return we will pay. There will be no other uh, side reasoning, uh, doing better, doing worse. There will be a contract specifying the, the, the requirements, the requirements that the solution provides. We will check the requirements are all uh, fulfilled and we will pay. That will be. Great. Uh, I thank you a lot for clarifying all of these questions.
very very well. <laughs> There is a question here in Torino. So just a quick question. Can we participate to several tenders? I mean, for instance, Turin, Cascais, Grenoble. Yeah, we suggest you to participate. In particular, Torino, Cascais and Maribor are really, really similar. They are working on different type of wastes, but the, pro the first problem is collection and data, and the second problem is uh, education and dissemination with citizens. So uh, if you are here, maybe you are interested also in Maribor and Cascais. Okay, so we can win also several tenders. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are happy that you will participate to several tenders. Camille uh, Vedel, CITEC, Torino. And there are more questions maybe online. I saw only the preview. But... Some, uh, yeah, there are a couple of, I don't know, I see a couple of questions from in the chat. Uh, the first one is from Alice Minichini. Is Turin planning to run other market consultations in the future? I mean, this is not very climate Climate we would like what we have for years. Then, I mean, we will have it, but uh, what you food waste soil? I mean, they they ask you if you will adopt this in the future for other. Uh, Okay, it's it's a really innovative uh, procedure for us. It's an experiment, and we can thank the Anci Toscana to help us. And we will see it's uh, innovation. So uh, we will uh, learn something, I hope. <laughs> and so maybe in the future we can implement this uh, practice also in other fights. Yeah. Okay, and there is another one from Roberto Cavallo. The proposition could include a dialogue with national, international level stakeholders like stakeholders like national EPR consortia or national authorities. I think yes. Uh, we have to think that the effects are on the city of Turin. If uh, it helps the city of Turin, yes. Uh, and also to go towards uh, a modification of laws or rules uh, at national level, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, but we have to think that the effect, the experimentation, is in the city of Torino. Okay, you're online, it's fine. I don't see, I don't know. Can also... I ask? Uh... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. I'm uh, Harris Mosias from uh, Future Intelligence, a Greek SME. Um, sorry, can you please repeat what is the duration of uh, the deployment of the experiment? Because I missed it. I know that it started in, in, in June, approximately, June 24. And for how long? Let's say one year all included. Okay, and uh, regarding the, the, the financing, uh, is there a pre-finance, uh, uh, finance upon uh, delivery, one batch of, uh, of stuff, let's say, of things, of features? We, we wouldn't be obliged, but uh, there is a nice tradition inside Anci Toscana to be uh, very positive to the interests of SMEs. So it's quite likely that we will pay some advance payment. But I cannot tell you more because it's not my decision. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Other question online? You can take the word and speak if you want. We have we have a right hand. It's Harris. I don't know if it was the same person that was talking earlier. Yes, yes, sorry. I'm going yeah, to it was lower you. Okay. it. Yes. No, no, no problem. <laughs> I thought it was uh, done automatically, but uh, yeah. No, no, that's too smart for Thanks. <laughs> so, Matteo, do you want to add something about the challenges of other cities? Yeah, or... yeah we can. 
Uh, yeah, we can. Francesco already introduced them quite much, but we can obviously. Uh, uh, just a moment, there is another question that came now. Okay. Uh, can we please know who can apply to the call and will the funding cover 100% of the budget? Um, uh, Francesco, if you want, I can answer. I mean, yes, everyone can answer, can, uh, can, 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 uh, can candidate, uh, can apply. And the funding as you subcontracting doesn't apply to the Horizon Europe. That's 100%. It means that you will make your own price. And uh, this is the price that, if accept, will be paid. Okay. Okay. About the challenges, some of you were also asking about them uh, i'll give maybe a bit more of insight of here uh, as you've seen we divided the challenges in two hubs i mean that's by argument then we have energy and mobility on one side uh, we have like uh, our friends in in, in sofia that as Francesco was anticipating have quite a rough problem with traffic i mean like 99.9 uh, percent .9 of cities in europe and they, they they want to reduce the use of uh, of personal cars. Okay, they they want uh, eighty percent of people using other means, uh, taking consideration that they want to double the share that they have today. And then the identif identified solution is using parking. I mean, improving the parking uh, change and making sure that people don't stay too much with their car. Then I don't know after an hour or two or leave. And then having more uh, changes of parking and then reducing the number of people that uh, are looking for a parking. According to some uh, data that uh, goes around Europe, take into consideration that today we consider that parking may have 20 to 30% of uh, impact on traffic. That's why uh, parking search. Uh, then that's why. And then they look for some solutions, something that with GPS and in particular tracks cars that get into a particular zone that uh, of the city that is the hypercenter. And they want uh, those, uh, then they want somehow to define patterns and understand who, who's getting in that area and how much, let's say, let's say they park and uh, what's their also there. Then it's a double strategy from one side. They want somehow to change the behaviors in a quite strong way. I mean, asking, billing people that don't respect the rules on the other side, they want uh, to track with data and understanding better what is really the real pattern in that area. Next slide, please. And we have Differdange. Differdange is very um, somehow interesting in the sense that they want to reduce the impact of um, of the electricity. Uh, today, electricity is a lot imported, is imported quite much also from nuclear power, then they consider not being uh, clean enough. And then the idea is to produce, produce locally 100% of electricity with clean obviously uh, technologies then the idea is mostly on using solar panels and um, eolic uh, uh, plants but the point is that the most important for them is that somehow they can make also the citizens contribute to that then they want somehow the, 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 the industrial area to um, adopt to, to, to let um, normal user to put their uh, to put the, 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 the solar panel to pay for them and somehow they need also data system also to first to understand where they can do it and second uh, to um, to make sure that they have an awareness raising uh, awareness raising uh, strategy. next please. Then Athens, again, they work a lot on behavioral change of citizens and they want to do on energy and mobility. In this case, it's mostly on buildings. Then what they want is more finding some solutions, mostly mobile apps, allowing to um, the population to, um, to, 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 to adopt a better behavior in particular on buildings and how they use energy. Next. 
and in Grenoble, they um, in Grenoble they want to work uh, mostly on soil, as Francesco said, about the data system, the data system, and uh, uh, helping the, then the soil artificialization. They want also to understand better how the the, the, the soil is uh, getting impacted by climate change, taking into consideration that in uh, in Grenoble they have a double. Uh, the problem, the, the soil uh, artifi artificialization is double, is, is evolution is double than the rest of the territory. Next. Then we work on Climate Hub 2. Then again, here we have Torino, Kashkai, Maribor, and Ioannina. Uh, okay, Torino, you heard enough, I think. Uh, next. Uh, yeah, next again. Okay, thank you. Uh, about Kashkai, as uh, both Francesco and Laura anticipated, here we have really uh, something that is really similar to Torino. Uh, they want to work less or more on the same circularity, on the same management, but on textiles. And they have somehow the same problem. They need, again, data platform, and they want, again, to promote and to support public awareness and supporting people to uh, to, 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 to to better uh, to better uh, manage textile uh, circularity next and Maribor again I mean uh, it's almost uh, it seems like that I'm repeating the same story a few times but in this case they want mostly to work in this case on bio waste but anyway, that's always the same pattern they want to do. Then really the solution in one of the cities may apply to the three of them, as long as um, this is awareness raising and it supports uh, improvement of behaviors and data uh, type of solutions. And last one. Okay, we're missing Ioannina. Okay, uh, there is the last one was Ioannina. Francesco showed it. No, it's not there. It's not there for some of the job, but it's not a big issue. Uh, Ioannina, anyway, it's uh, again, it's they want to, as lakes, small lakes in particular, or not that big, like the ones that they have, is um, wants to uh, create air pollution somehow. If they're polluted, they create air pollution. And then they need to work with the authorities around and all the ecosystem to study via data the, the status of the lake and what is polluting them and understanding where is the problem, if there is one, and making sure that they, they can, via those data, again, support uh, behavioral change because they have a lot of tourists and uh, that kind of stakeholders that also intervene, and then it's it's fundamental to improve behaviors around the, 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 the protection of the lake. And to close, you have here the slide with all the preliminary market consultations that we are having or we will have. The first three, obviously, this one, I can say that it's almost done, um, are, uh, have been Sofia, Grenoble, Alp Metropole, and now Turin. And then we will move on. Uh, on Monday, we have Athens. And then we will move to Kashkaish, Yohan, in a different national Maribor, having one less or more every day. And then if you are interested, I really, I really invite you to participate in particular. Maribor and Kashkaish may really, uh, for the ones that are interested in waste, may be the ones that are more uh, useful or interesting for you. <laughs> So thank you. I want to add only uh, a thing because you mentioned a lot the if uh, we participate only for textile or only for we and so on, you can give us this information that it's better, in your opinion, to work only on one type of waste because of that money, because of to work of the whole city and because you need to work with the right expertise, for example. This is something you can say to us and we can put it in some way in the tender. It's my last reflection about all this. Uh, there are any other questions?
we will also collect all our data on the actual system the, about uh, the collection of uh, oases and maybe we, we will put it in the question and answer uh, in the FAQ maybe, Francesco, it could be a good... Uh... We can prepare a report after this uh, uh, event. Instead of uh, repeating what people said, we can add uh, uh, more information like the one you were mentioning, Laura. Good. Uh, in this way, all people are informed uh, how is the collection now in Torino. Exactly. And so maybe we can end it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here and for your attention also in remote. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also from Bye -bye. us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.